Now don't you call this a regular jam. I'm gonna rock this land. I'm gonna take this itty bitty world by storm and I'm just getting warm. So for all my hammer bros out there, I've got a really fun build for you. You can just put a monster to sleep and hit him with that maximum damage. Now let's get into the equipment for this build. You're going to be running the Tarith Hammer Sleep for your weapon. Your headpiece is going to be the Kulf Taroth Fury Beta. The Kirin Jacket Gamma is going on the chest. For the arms, waist, and legs, we're going to be running the Nergigante Gamma Armor. And finally, the Attack Charm 3 is going to go into your charm slot. On the decoration front, we're going to be putting the Flawless Jewel in the hammer. The headpiece is going to have another Flawless Jewel with a Drain Jewel. Two Drain Jewels are going to go into the chest. The arms are going to have a KO Jewel with two Sleep Jewels. A Flawless Jewel and another Sleep Jewel goes into the waist. And finally, two KO Jewels are going to go into the legs. All in all, this build is going to be made for knocking them out. We're going to have attack boost at level 7, max. Sleep attack at 3, also at max. The free element ammo up at 3, and that's to get the element out of the hammer, which is hidden. Slugger at 3, also max. Stamina Thief, maxed out at 3. Peak performance is maxed out at 3. We're going to get 2 points in Agitator, 1 point in Part Breaker, a point in Maximum Might, and the Nurkigante set bonus. Alright Hunters, now let's get into the best practices of using this build. It's a very beefy build and as you can see, the main gimmick behind it is the sleep element. So we're going to be knocking monsters to sleep and especially having sleep attack up at 3, you're going to be doing the maximum sleep damage on these monsters, which gives you the perfect chance to give them one of those big wake up hits with your hammer. To allow you to keep the pressure on, Slugger at 3 and Stamina Thief at 3 allow you to tire the monster quicker and inflict more KOs. KO damage is usually caused by blunt weapons and it knocks them down. And exhaustion is a great state because when you get a monster drooling and just hunched over, that's the perfect time to lay into it, especially if you got a beefy weapon like the hammer. I slotted in three levels of peak performance. It's one of my favorite skills to use when I'm running a regen weapon. And the hammer hits so hard and inflicts so much damage that with regen on the hammer, I am bringing in more health than I'm losing as long as I'm keeping pressure on. Pairing the regen on my hammer with the Nergigante set bonus also allows me to keep my health as high as possible. Which is great because when you're running peak performance at max, you're going to be getting plus 20 to your attack as long as your health is full. And with this particular build, your health is going to be full more often than not. As for the throwaway skills in this build, typically I don't really talk about them, but it doesn't hurt to have two points in agitate, which is great because if you're hunting a monster correctly, you're going to be sending them into that agitated state more often. One point in part breaker is always nice when you want to break faces. Plus one point in maximum might is always nice for that little bit of extra affinity. Once again, thank you for tuning in to my Monster Hunter World mix set series. I honestly don't know how much longer I'm going to keep on doing it until Iceborn. I'm most likely going to take a break from making these builds about a month out from Iceborn. But until then, I'm going to keep on plugging out some of my fun builds because why the hell not, right? People are still playing Monster Hunter. If you like my content, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you dig it. And hey, if you want to check it out, it's mostly a tip jar right now. My link to my Patreon is down below. But thanks again for tuning in. I've been your boy Justin Prince. You stay frosty, hunters, and get lifted. Bye, guys.